Indian Students Federation has worked at Budapest. So he has a very good experiences. In the younger days, he was very close to our advocate A.V.G. Nair, former vice president of IAB. He is very close to him. So he has been MLA for 10 years from Nadhapuram. Where those days at Nadapuram there was communal clashes was happening, unfortunately. Because of the very consistent, very, very, in, uh, very, very, very big role played by Kamal Binoy Bishwam MLA, and he has had intimate intervention and uh, interaction with all sections of the people. So finally, we could achieve the total perfect communal harmony in Nadapuram. So it's a unique contribution by Binoy Vishwam. And also he has served as Minister for Forest and Housing in Kerala and for five years. And he has done a very exemplary service in that area. He is one of the secretaries of the CPI, Communist Party of India at the national level. He is a working committee member of AITUC, National Committee. And he is also the president, as rightly Communist CHV told. He is president of the all in the LIC Employees Federation. He has been closely associated with a lot of work. He has graduated in law and political science. So his contribution is very, very, very good. And he is always voicing the voiceless in the parliament. And uh, he is taking up the issues of the toiling masses, the working class, the public for, for defending a public sector banking system. He's a very true friend of IABA. And so we are so happy to introduce from Binoy Vishwam, Member of Parliament, today, we are fortunate to have such a wonderful person as today's speaker. And now, over to Comrade Binoy Vishwam. Thank you. Good evening to all of you, my dear comrades. I salute you all on this glorious moment of of the 75th anniversary of the ABA, that is the occasion. And the ABA in a very imaginative way outlines a series of lectures as part of webinars to commemorate this occasion. That shows the middle of the ABA and the leadership. During this period of crisis of the pandemic, where the whole life is on a stalemate, the ABA rightly decided not to sit idle. The 52nd year of the bank nationalization, along with that, the 75th anniversary of the ABA should be properly taken to the bank employees and to the public in the proper way. Fully understanding the necessity of that two events to be emotionally and politically commemorated, we have planned this series and I once again congratulate our leadership of the ABA. I am very thankful to Comrade Filipe and Comrade Dawson for us for introducing me in such a way. And the most uh, impressive fact that they spoke here about me is that I am a true friend and a comrade of the ABA. Always in my life, I regard this as a honor of me. It's a great honor to a Rastinda's cattle like me, though not a bank employee, to be called as a true friend, a co fighter, a comrade in arms of the bank employee's moments. I'm thankful to all of you for regarding me as a sincere friend and a trustworthy fighter who will stand with you. At every ups and downs of our movements. I would like to mention a 
one or two sentences. Nature song. Just now we heard it. That song to mark the AIBA anniversary. I should. It's a very very meaningful and touching song. So something good to begin the seminars every day with that song. Then our carriers and members understand that song in the right sense. If, if they can try to learn it by heart, and those who can sing it should sing it, even in our small band level group meetings. That makes a difference. I even suggest once again that let the AIBA national leadership give a call to all the state committees of the AIBA to translate this song. So there is same song. In all the languages of India, and with the same tune, that song to be sung wherever AIBA meets. This song will be rung there to the ears of the AIBA cadets and members, and the bank employees should know and understand and love and respect AIBA. Not only through our words, but through our song also, that can be achieved. So this is a humble suggestion from my side. I think A B A can do this. And. At the 75th anniversary, as a friend of the ABA, I would like to repeat a proposal which I used to share with our comrades many times in Kerala, right from ABG days. That is, the ABA with its vitality, its vibrance, its army of cadets, its clarity of understanding and ideological. That should think about educating not only the working class of the ABA of the bank sector. Think of educating other sections of the working class also with the spirit of fight. Many organizations need it now, but due to several reasons, they cannot fulfill that task. Let the ABA make an anniversary pledge in every state level or even district level. A sort of a ideological process for the working class to train them and educate them in the spirit of the working class ideology, and so that our careers can be strengthened. And they can be ready for the future fights that are definitely to come. Not only in your sector, in all sectors, that is possible, and that is the need of the world. So I make this request for the ABA at this 70th anniversary year to think about it in a positive manner. The slogan that we have adopted for this anniversary observation, everyone should definitely say, it is most appropriate. Vibrant banking for vibrant India. Only we can say it. The government of the day has forgotten that task. They fail to understand the meaning of that slogan. We want this country of ours to be vibrant always, not only today, tomorrow, and in future. In the times to come, we want our great nation to be vibrant. 
for that vibrates our economy is very vital for that vibrates for that vibrant banking is a pre condition and that slogan has a sense in that aspects when the bankers when the rulers and the prime minister when the fm on the all such big people they have completely forgotten about this task and we through this very slogan is attempting ourselves to make them remind and to select in their ears that for this country to be vibrant in the future a vibrant banking is a must for that we adopt a slogan and that slogan has a meaning in depth and width and along with that we are telling the basic truth and facts that banks belong to the people the money of the banks of the people is money don't throw that money to the winds and fancies of Vijay Malliya type of people. Don't stretch that money for the greed of the rich of this country. The money, the resource that the banks are dealing with, with the people sweat and tears, that is the wealth of the country. They are telling us, the ruling class are telling us, that the wealth creators are to be taken care of they should be promoted the prime minister the home minister the finance minister all of them in chorus they say it this government of theirs the bjp government is committed to protect the interest of the wealth creators we raise the question with all emphasis to raise it who are the wealth creators who are they for modi and his cronies wealth creators means the super rich the dani dambanis who are their political cousins and financial masters they are the wealth creators for the governments but we know they are not the wealth creators they don't create any wealth the wealth creators are the people that's the meaning of the slogan the money in the bank is the people's money by any level of understanding with devil yardstick that is to take the case of every bank the deposits of all the banks are mainly i mean for the people the common man the workers the employees the laborers they are the depositors their money makes the bank strong and vibrant so they get this money because they create the wealth a portion of that wealth come at their savings and that savings are coming to the bank and that makes the bank's deposits and that is the bank's standard stability then what happens that money that amount that resource is being given to the adani sangambanis and sometimes vijay mallyas and the rich of his such kind of people they are giving it up there contribution of them the what is their business the people's money are thrown to the feet and the greed of those people by the government and they call this greedy elements the shady characters the economic offenders 
they are now trained in a very very honorable name as well paid this we stand the government to be corrected the prime minister and his friends should understand the real well paid is are not their crowns but we the people are the well paid is by this slogan they be a fully prosperity to its glorious past is trying to uphold the people's interests the people's cause with that slogan we are making our hearts more close to the people's hearts we know that we together can wage this battle we are confident that with this battle together we will win and we know the fact again that we can win only unitedly severally and dividedly we cannot win this battle it's a tough battle so for this battle the aba has always taken the initiative for the full fresh unity unity of the bank of boys the tall greatness of understanding with a broad minded approach with a lot of concessions and uh, forgiveness should spread the word we have seen to take care for the unity of the bank of boys and we are very very proud about the united form of the bank of boys they be a role in creating and strengthening the u of b u is not to everyone and that shows the tradition of the ib when we say about the 75 years it was a meaning only because of that 75 years and the spirit of that 75 years and because of the struggles and sacrifices of the 75 years we could take the lead at every step we could take the lead with all broadness of approach we were dedicated ourselves for the unity of the bank of boys so our contribution for the efpu speaks a lot about the experience of the aba of the last 75 years it has a meaning the newcomers on the scene may not be knowing it when i talk about the newcomers i speak not only about the new members of the aba i talk about the newcomers in the bank employees new movement over the late comers and newcomers they don't know what aba is they should know that this is the organization which for the first time in the history of the industry talked about the health of the banking industry not today decades back aba is the slogan the health of the banking industry then we will just this was not of not there the nirav modi was not there then vijay malya was not on the scene but still on those days initial days itself they we could won this country and gain this country with the slogan of the health of the banking industry so that speaks about the 75 years now we know the situation has changed changed not for the better but for the worse what does it mean and what does it tell us to cry to weep to flee from the battle no 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 these challenges are asking us to be more vigilant to be more militant to be more united 
and to be more class conscious and to take up the struggle as a struggle for the nation for the bank employees but not only really for them but for the people of this country this challenge has to be taken with all seriousness that is the meaning of the anniversary of the aba during the seventh year of existence we understand that that's our slogan you know what is happening around us you remember when you read the bible we come across a parts the so 2000 years ago the crowds frenzied crowds they shouted like this crucify jesus crucify jesus and set free barabbas we all know who jesus was crucify him and you must be not be known who was barabbas barabbas was the thief of the first grade of those days he was barabbas this crowd was shouting free him free him set him free barabbas is our man so he should be freed and when he is freed crucify jesus that was the slogan a dramatic moment which happened could have said years ago we know now and then that crowd was a mass of intoxicated people intoxicated there intoxicated by so many provocations and so many offers and so many lies and preachings they were not knowing the facts just the crowd unruly and uneducated that crowd but today in our contemporary days also we are listening to such a slogan in our country what is that slogan that slogan says crucify the psus crucify crucify kill them the country no more want them so crucify the psus crucify the public sector banks no more national banks here we don't need it and they are set free barabbas with that spirit that telling spread the red carpet for the private sector red carpet for the bank no the private players red carpet for the greed of the profit mongers red carpet red carpet so that crowd was unruly uneducated intoxicated but this is not a crowd this slogan of today which is trying to kill the psus of the banks and other industries of the financial sector they are not intoxicated they are so called knowledgeable persons the prime ministers the finance minister the that minister this minister the planning boards the niti ayog all those big people high sounding people they are telling this slogan to kill the public sector that is the challenge that we face today and that challenge is to be fought back and we have to win this battle not only really for our sake this battle our victory is for india and its future and we know how it happens we know the great moment of bank nationalization was in 1969 it happened when people believe it happened as a gesture of somebody no bank nationalization was not at all a gesture it was the product of a particular political situation the climax of the political developments i don't want to take much of the time elaborating on that points 
but indian political scene was undergoing a special kind of a change a sort of a change in those days in which the then ruling class party the congress was facing a split a vertical split in that split two segments of forces confronted each other one which is democratic understanding comparatively to the state views mainly on its foreign policy and some of the domestic policy they are comparatively better on the other side was just the opposite they were having an intention for the us interest policies they are always building for the super rich the big bankers the princely big people who were ruling the country as princely states the owners of the malikan the proprietors of men for them and the banks were open for them the bank money was meant for them and this right in the congress they were trying to take the congress hijack the congress to that way the other parts in those days became weak in the parliaments that segment of the congress became numerically weak also in those days they were forced to seek the support of the left for its very existence in the government because they need numbers now and then as a left activist i am telling you the left is not a very big force but left is a necessary force a serious political force a force with force at this a force which stands always committed to the masses and to the country's great future that is the left so that left was approached by this segment of the congress led by shivani indira gandhi which was said to put it in lighter manner i should say quid pro quo yes we support you we will give you the numbers and we would see that you are not fallen he will save you from the sides he will protect you from the right attack but in them what will you do the communist party of india i'm telling you with all fervor and pride being a party member of the communist party of india i should tell you to the bangalore boys that this party may not be a very big party but a party with a clarity a party with a sincere approach to the nation a party with a true progressive content we put the slogan and make a condition before the congress government of top place in turn what we need is not anything personal or private we need two major steps political steps one was the bank nationalization to stop the private pits for the rest while princely rulers stop it it is people's money don't give that money in crores to those people only because they were the rulers on the planet time you are giving that money to them there is no one then stop it right now and the money in the banks are the people's money so don't let this banks to open their coffers before the rich and the super rich and forget the people let the banks be nationalized and make that money useful for the country's progress this is what we need in there in that condition we support you the congress agreed to it and the left mainly the cpi supported that government this is the history don't forget this political path also i don't want you all to become the cpa members tomorrow no i'm not here to reach the cpa politics here but definitely i'm here to tell you politics the 
politics of the working class, the politics of the history, the politics of the 1960s and 70s. We should know without that political part, without touching upon that historical political initiatives, one has no right to discuss about the diagnosisation. It happened in such a very clear and definite political background. And that India is now changed. Not only that India, that world has undergone dramatic changes. That world no more exists. This world of ours that we live is, they called it as an era of globalization. Era of globalization. Further, they make it more dramatically and tell us this is the LPG era, the era of LPG. What is the LPG? I remember in the school days, my school teacher was telling us LPG is the short form of liquefied petroleum gas, which is the cooking gas. Its full name is liquefied petroleum gas and in short, they called it LPG. When we learned the school, LPG was meant for that. But today for the planners, for the economists, for the pundits, LPG means that two, that three connotations, liberalization, privatization, and globalization. This LPG denotes that idea. And they call it the era, the age of LPG. What is the chunk of the LPG? What is the chunk of the LPG? They have no hesitation to tell us profits, markets are the chunk of it. Markets will decide everything. Markets know everything. Markets dictate everything. Markets can never be wrong and markets, markets, markets. That is the soul of the LPG. And it has affected the banks very much, the economy very much, the safety very much. The value systems have been affected. The country's path of development and growth has been reversed because of this kind of LPG. And that LPG is gaining momentum during our times. Let me talk today, which has become more and more powerful. That shows that our struggle also have to be intensified. We have to strengthen our forces. We have to see that our power is not weakened. The gunpowder for the working class. It is not for sabotage, for struggle, for peace, for progress, for life, not for death. Our gunpowder is our unity, our working class ideology, our quality of issues, and above all, our love to our nation is our gunpowder. Let that gunpowder not wet. Let us keep it dry always. We need it every now and then. Otherwise, they will jump upon us and attack us and kill us someday. We cannot die like that because we have to save this nation. Our nation cannot die like that. This is the main task of the times. So LPG, you know what happened to it? I suddenly remember the name of George Soros. George Soros was never a left intellectual. He was never a progressive ideologue. George Soros was a multi-billionaire. He is American, Hungarian. Roots are there for him. George Soros himself 
introduced him that he's a capitalist, an advocate of laissez-faire, the ideology of the free markets. He is like that. And this inauguration of the LPG and the new era began in 1991. With the fall of the Soviet Union, the triumph of the market economy, which happened in 91, the beginning of the 90s. And after 70 years, in 1998, this self acclaimed capitalist, the friend of the market economy, the ardent supporter of the free markets, he wrote a book. He wrote a book which is known to the whole world now, in 35 languages within one year, two years. It was published in 35 countries in languages. And that book is not of that sort of a book, like End of History. You know, Francis Fukuyama, the man who wrote the book called End of History, just after the fall of the Soviet Union, that book was in the market, which was like a hot cake for readers. It was like a Bible for the free markets in Russia. And that Bible was called End of History. And this book was not of that time. When we hear that a book written by a other friend of the capitalist who himself is a capitalist, we may think that book is a book against the progressive ideas, a book in favor of the free markets. Quanta. No. That book was titled The Crisis of global capitalism. The crisis of global capitalism was first mentioned after 70 years of the beginning of the market economy, free markets, frenzied journey, that book came out. In that book, George Soros wrote, in this way of developments, capitalism is not going to survive. It is going to fall in weak cases. And that crisis may eventually lead to the end of the market economy itself. That fast is agony. Yes, it's agony. Out of anguish, he wrote, he warned them, his friends, be very careful. This is a very tight crop walk. In this walk, the basic principles of capitalism itself is in danger. So let us all unite to protect capitalism, to save the markets. That was the call of that book. Make that call, this book, The Crisis of Global Capitalism was written. 70 years after the fall of Soviet Union in 1998. You know the teachings of the classical capitalism. Classical capitalism has taught us very clearly the three factors of production. They themselves are telling us Production is the basis of growth, production. Productivity is very important. So for that production, capitalism in its classical form has taught us the three ingredients for that. One is land, two, labor, three, capital. Land, labor, and capital. These Three factors are essential for the production process. Without that, no production is possible. 
no progress is possible so land is important labor is important capital is also important this is the teaching by the classical capitalists we ask them the government of today we ask the terms of today we ask the republicans of america and the rss bjp of india and the bolsonaro gang of brazil we ask them are you ready to follow the basic capitalism of yourself have you forgotten the classical capitalism if you have forgotten it you can go in despair because now you believe that labor is an enemy of production you proclaim labor has to be done away with labor as a class labor as a task labor as a fact labor the one the work that human endeavor that should be finished away with the capitalism of today has no regard for labor in that way they are even forgetting their own classical doctrines that is what happened today that's why george soros called it not as market friendliness he said market friendliness is okay i am for that friendly to market we all should be market friendliness according to george soros he was pleading for that friendship with the market but he lamented that border line has been crossed now now we are not going through the market friendliness we have entered market fundamentalism market fundamentalism with the usage by george soros in that book and from 1998 till this day we are seeing this facts capitalism at a world level is going through a more disastrous way of development all its earlier and classical concepts are changed just blind now just mad now only for one thing that is profit and profit and profits minus profit without profit they have no concern other thing is for that thing. that's why they can bring the labor force they can bring the new and new amendments that's why they argue for the farm laws that's why they attack the campuses that's why they are proclaim that struggle is illegal so in different sector they will do after like no struggles are now possible if anybody a union leader calls for a strike he can be jailed that's why the human right activists activists is tortured and killed in the jail that's why stand swami is are born in our country born and killed all these are not accidental no complaints these are not accidental then market friendliness becomes market fundamentalism and when that market fundamentalism to create a new concept of the world and human value structure the social values and social decencies and the constitutional principles itself are undermined all these are possible and that is what we are discussing today in this times where we live we are seeing the capitalist growth has reached such a stage the world over the world over india also 
the same situation in this new development of capitalism we can see a new religion is born a new god is born new place of worship is born which is the new religion the new religion of today is greed greed has become the new religion for that religion they have a new god and that god is profits and that god has a temple for a most what do you call it and that place of worship is the markets that's the new development today. this is what capitalism has given to the world when we speak in the covid days of pandemic days the lessons are very very good for us lots and lots of people died over the world over in the itself four lakh people died the capital of capitalism is america the country in which the maximum number of people were dead all the world witnessed it no time now to go into that details but that days these days taught us one more lesson and that lesson is the market option has failed the market option has failed the market option which always preach for the god of profits which is concerned only about the profits just no regard for the human life even that's why people were dying on the streets in america and in india don't forget the fate of the magdal laborers in india the unorganized labor the domestic workers the rich people the poor workers nationalization brought all these people to the banks before 1969 Banks were never meant for them, but from 1969 onwards, when the concept of new banking emerged, from class banking the concept became mass banking. Then, as masses, these workers, these segments, the poor people, they came to the banks in small deposits that they came in small deposits. they became friendly with them thanks were meant for them also we knew their role in the banking their small 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 deposits earnings when put together it became a mighty ocean of deposits then what happens you know hey we you know they were the willful defaulters we know who are they with a very very bold voice to raise some heads they be a told this nation that the defaulters are not small people they are big people and this defaults are not accidental it is willful defaults and they be a has the courage to tell their names openly before the nation the long list we came these are the names big names they are all are celebrities before whom the ministers bow their heads for whom the prime minister and the president may wait for hours together for whom there was no need of a permission to go to any higher office of this country they are the defaulters they are the defaulters not this common man not the magdal laborers not the domestic workers not the truck pullers no unemployed youths no they are not the reason for the bank failure the major chunk of the defaults 
or some this kind of people. We know the whole details. I don't want to elaborate upon that point because you know it better than me. The CMIA figures are before us about the state of the economy. It happens. And we stand at that process. This anniversary of the ABA, this anniversary of the bank nationalization, are coming to us at this juncture. What to do and where to go? This is the question. We know the answer also. We have to fight it back. What to do? Fight back. Fight back. Where to go? For a meaningful India. For a vibrant India. For that we stand. Comrades, we are very clear. United we stand. Divided we fall. Before I conclude, I may be allowed to talk to you from my memory of from Pope Francis. Pope Francis in his very important encyclical letter. That letter in, in, in Latin was called Lavo Seto. Means Praise to you, praise the Lord, not the meaning. It's a praise for the Lord. Quite natural from a Pope. But in that document, which is very, very important for a, a Christian faith, he narrated about the world of today. He discussed about the global warming elaborately in that in that in that address, in technical letter. The global warming. In that context, he called upon the whole people, not only for the Christians, the whole people of the world, he called to come together to save the earth. In that context, he called the earth as our common home. The earth, our common home. He called like that. In that book, he touched upon a very serious political economic part. That is about globalization. He interlinked global warming with globalization. And he narrated the real nature of capital. Capital, he used the word capital, not in a covered way. Very open way, he mentioned about capital. He narrated capital was never just for to the people. It have cheated the young and the old. All the promises of capital given to the old was forgotten. All the commit commitments. Capital gave to the young, like jobs, two plus jobs or five plus jobs, bright future, good education, all of the promises. Every country they do it. Every Modi do it. Every Trump do it. Every Bolsonaro do it. They are doing it. But when Pope is telling them, with an explicit finger on them, he is telling, you have not kept the promises. You have cheated the people, both young and those. He told capital was always unjustful to the women. Capital was always cruel to the nature. For the greed and for the profits, it did Unexplainable 
wrong to the nature. That's why global warming. This is the way of a pope in this century where we live. That means people in large numbers in the past who were not expected to be outspoken in these times. They are also clear about the happenings around us. So, wide open our eyes to our surroundings. Not the facts happening around us. Learn the lessons which we are to learn. Definitely we have to learn. After remembering Pope Francis, my memories went to Karl Marx. Then I thought that I should read to you a small paragraph which may be relevant now in this context of the world and India today. This is from the volume number one of Marx's great work, The Capital. In chapter 31, Marx writes, Years back, in 1841, he wrote, with adequate profits, capital is very bold. I am quoting from Mars. With adequate profits, capital is very bold. A certain 10 persons will ensure its employment anywhere. 20% certain to produce eagerness for capital. 50% profits. It's the positive audacity for the capital. 100% profits will make it ready to trample on all human values. Mars wrote in the 1840s. 100% profits will make capital ready to trample on all human values. 300% profits. And then there is not a crime which it will scruple or a risk it will not run even to the chance of its honor being hanged. If 300% profits are sure, Capital will do everything. The consequence of which may be even its honor being killed or hanged, but capital will not hesitate to go on. If turbulence and strife will bring profits, capital will freely encourage both. If turbulence and strife will bring profits, capital will freely encourage both. This is the basic nature of capitalism, according to Marx. About that capital, Francis Marpapa says this in 2020s. There is a long gap between 1840s and 2020s. One may think there's a world of difference between Marx and Pope, but you can compare the both. We stand here now. I don't want to elaborate more. Let us devote our time and energy, our brains and thoughts understand this world of today. And when we devote that time for this purpose, I am sure any genuine bank employee with a sense will feel proud of their VA. Definitely his consciousness will tell him that the VA is the pride of our times. As a working class cadre, I always feel the ABA is great. 
and with that great bank of the ABA, we march forwards. Comrades, I assure you, in this onward march, I, as a fighter, will stand shoulder to shoulder with you as a true comrade in arms inside the parliaments, more outside the parliaments. Thank you very much. That's salute. Very nice, Comrade Benai. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You are very nice. Thank you so much for your uh, very inspiring address. And we feel encouraged to fight more. And we also understand the politics behind what is going on now. So your speech was very useful. And now I request Comrade uh, Joseph to propose a word of thanks. Well, thank you very much, Comrade Binoy Vishwa. And we have assured to uh, fight for public sector banking system inside and outside the parliament. And you have assured the support of the CPI and the left parties. So thank you very much. And you have enlightened uh, about the corporate loads, the willful default, everything. So the need of the working class politics, it's all, you have highlighted everything. Thank you very much. And now it is uh, time to close the, this session. So once again, uh, we are sure that with the people's support, with the adequate support of the, all the political parties, progressive hey, forces. Did, did, did they take much of your time? More time than... No, no, no. Quite okay. Quite okay. 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 Thank you. Then with the, all the um, support of the entire people and the banking clientele, we can defeat the denationalization. That is our... Uh, hope and with that hope we will be defending our best efforts and safeguard the public sector banking system. So thank you very much and uh, we shall overcome all the hurdles and we shall ensure that banks belongs to people and so people's own banks should not be privatized that is our aim. That is our goal. United, we will fight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Binoy Vishwa, on behalf of AABA. Thank you. Tomorrow, comrades, tomorrow there is a slight change in the program. Tomorrow, the General Secretary of Hind Mazdur Sabha, HMS, Comrade Harbhajan Singh Sidhu, was to address. But he has a very unavoidable commitment tomorrow. So there is a change. Tomorrow, Comrade K. Govindan, the All India General Secretary of General Insurance Employees All India Association, is also the convener of the Coordination Committee of the Banks, Insurance and Financial Sector Unions. He will be talking to us in this webinar tomorrow. You know, in banks, we are opposing merger and government is imposing merger. In the general insurance sector, our unions are demanding merger to strengthen the insurance company, but government is not agreeable to merger. That means whatever you demand, they will not agree. So those things are also very important. Insurance are also part of the financial sector. That lecture will be very useful tomorrow. So while thanking you, we request once again for your cooperation to attend tomorrow's program a large number. Today, more than 400 people listen to Comrade Binay Wilson in this uh, Zoom meeting. In addition, in Twitter and Facebook and also in YouTube, more than 3,000 people have already listened to him. And further, they'll be continuing to listen in the uh, late hours also. So that way, tomorrow we request your continued cooperation. With this, we are closing today's function. Good night and thank you very much to all of you.